And this is Ken Duck on, who gave us a bit of a thrill this afternoon by almost becoming Ken Duck off. He was threatening not to go through with the fight in a dispute over money with promoter Don King. It was later resolved at the insistence of New Jersey Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard in Ahn's favor. As you can see, he readies for his first championship fight. Kyung Duk Ahn from the Jinju province of South Korea is 29 years old. He has been boxing for seven years as a professional. This will be his first fight on this side of the Pacific Ocean. He saw the Taylor Chavez bout and told us he was more impressed with Meldrick Taylor. Korean fighters typically are very strong, very determined, well-conditioned, but lacking in world-class boxing skills. Kim Dugan has had 30 bouts, 29 wins. The one loss took place a few years back. 13 knockouts and 29 wins is indicative of suspect power. Maybe not the kind of punching power he would need to put up a stiff battle against Julio Cesar Chavez. He uh, has the facial structure of somebody who can take punishment, but he hasn't faced anyone nearly of the caliber of the man he's in with tonight. He told us he believes this is a bit of a crossroads fight for all Korean fighters, because he's acutely aware that those fighters have mostly shown courage and not technique when fighting in the USA. And here now is Chavez entering with what is becoming a larger and larger entourage with each passing assignment. A remarkable fighter and athlete. All those qualities that I ascribed to Korean fighters he has, and much more, including many skills. And just look at that, his last fight exactly a month ago. And that's one of the reasons he's been able to sustain himself on top, because he keeps active, stays in shape, never has to go out of his way to get in shape for a fight. He sees it as his responsibility to an adoring boxing public in Mexico to make himself available there to fight. And he has had four assignments since the Meldrick Taylor bout. In this Me man is extraordinary in every way. In Mexico, he was very highly regarded before the Taylor fight, but there were arguments among the cognoscenti of whether he was good as some other outstanding Mexican fighters. But after the drama of his victory over Taylor, uh, he went up a notch, he says, and now so much is expected of him. Another look at the record, and we remind you that we at HBO are relatively conservative in crediting Chavez with 70 wins. There are others who give him as many as 72 or 73, but for us, it looks like this. 70 and 0, no draws, 60 knockouts. Tail of the tape, and you will see that there is little difference between the two, an inch height advantage for on. They weighed in at the same weight, one pound under the limit. The reach is identical at 71 inches. And here are our punch stat numbers, which give you a profile of how active these fighters are. Of course, it's very difficult to assess these, given the difference in the caliber of opposition they have faced. New Jersey rules for the bout. Three judges will score it on the 10-point must. No standing eight count, no three knockdown rule, and a fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th, a New Jersey rule. Right now, let's go up to the ring announcer, Michael Buffer, for the pre-fight introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Atlantic City's Convention Hall by way of Donald Trump's Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino here on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey. This bout is approved by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board. Boxing Commissioner here in the Garden State is Larry Hazard Sr. The Chairman, Jerry Gormley. Board members, Gary Shaw and Richard Harrison. Deputy Commissioners are Lawrence Wallace and R. Yogi Hiltner. Chief Physician of Ringside is Dr. Frank P. Dog, and also in attendance, Dr. Earl Shaw and Dr. Paul Williams. This bout is also sanctioned by the World Boxing Council, President Jose Suleiman and Ringside Supervisor Gabriel Peña Garricano. The IBF is also sanctioning this bout, President Robert W. Lee and Supervisor Ringside Marion Muhammad. 
Alternate referee, Tony Orlando, counting for the knockdown seconds, and a timekeeper is Roosevelt Gilbert. The three judges assigned at ringside for this bout. First of all, from Puerto Rico, Angel Guzman. From Switzerland, Oranz Marti. And from the United States, Frank Brunette. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Don King Productions, in association with the Trump Plaza, presents 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Lightweight and IBF Junior Welterweight Championships. The referee for this bout, working for the 72nd time in a world title match, is Tony Perez. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the red trunks with red letters. He weighs an even 139 pounds from Jinju, South Korea. His professional record, an outstanding one, 29 victories, 13 by KO, only one defeat. He's the number one ranked challenger in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, Kyung Dok Ah! And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing the red trunks with black trim. He also weighs an even 139 pounds. From Culiacan, Mexico. An outstanding professional record. 70 consecutive victories without a loss or a tie. 60 victories by KO. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the WBC Super Lightweight and IBF Junior Welterweight Champion of the World. Julio Cesar Chavez. This is Meldrick Taylor country, so that was a very nice reception. Oh, hey, Chavez. Huh? Oh. Julio Cesar, and I'm just giving you the instructions already in the dressing room. Alguna pregunta? Any questions? Shake hands, and good luck to both of you. Shake hands. Kyung Dugan told us that his fight plan would be to allow Chavez to set the pace in the first couple of rounds, find out what it is Chavez does, and then hope to extend the bout and make it a long one. starter who builds momentum from the second and third rounds onward he likes to start out by finding opportunities to go to the body particularly with the vicious left hook maybe the best left hook to the body in boxing that was a straight left on the rib cage first effective punch from on the moment on appears to be a little cuter than we're used to seeing in the, the many Korean challengers who have come to America those jabs are being blocked by Chavez who has both gloves up in front of his face and there's the first left hook to the body it might have been a little low tries a left hook to the body. Nice combination, four punch combination, one of them landed. Boxing is so popular in Korea that ultimately we should find a real world-class champion in one of the bigger divisions from there. Call that many Korean boxers did well at the 88 Olympics in Seoul. 
Although, of course, many of us will just remember the one Korean boxer who sat down in the ring for about an hour after the fight. There's another outstanding combination from Kyung Duk on, Larry. Four punches, the last two of which connected solidly. He seems to be warming up a little bit. Chavez has his eyes fixed on a spot below Ahn's Adam apple, Adam's apple as he continues to look for opportunities to the body. And as we go to the corners between rounds, interpreters in both corners. Ruben Castillo, former two-time world champion, will bring us the information from Chavez's corner and Ron Lee, who has helped us in the past with Korean fighters, will do so in Ahn's corner. The spit bucket, you bring the spit bucket up. Come on, hey, get the spit bucket. Okay, uh-huh. Throw your jab more. Move. Move him back and forth. Throw your jab, your left hook to the body, and throw that combination. Come on, keep your mind straight. Keep your mind straight. You did it right. You did it right. Watch out, watch out for his right jabs. The uninitiated viewer might be a little startled to see that Ahn was credited by Punchstat with landing only seven blows in round one, but as we mentioned, many of his punches were blocked by Chavez on the gloves. finished Meldrick Taylor. Certainly not thrown with the violent intent that it was thrown with when Taylor went down. That did not appear to be the kind of punch that would put a championship class fighter on his back. Unless it was a harder punch than he's ever been hit before. He told us he had never been down before. He's about to go down again. Job is landing with lefts and rights, and on searches out a place to fall down. Now he looks to his corner for guidance. Six, seven, eight. I think he was cowering on the ropes there after a body shot hurt him, Jim. Remember, there is no three knockdown rule in effect, so it's conceivable that on could go down again and continue fighting. And Chavez looks like he wants to get this over with quickly. try to keep Chavez busy. This could be a long minute for Kyung Duk on. Good right hand by on and another one. Both landing flush on Chavez's face. This is a very game kit. Well, he's going to find out that Chavez has one of the great chins in the business. He's not backing off, trying to defend himself with offense. Landed another right hand at long range, and there's a left, and another left. Chavez digs a hook to the body, and that stops on for just a moment. All in all, a pretty courageous show by Kyung Dugan, who has been down twice in the round, but has rallied. Another left hook to the body, and Chavez gets in a right hand in the closing seconds of round number two. Ah. <laughs> 
Yeah, we're going to go. Come on, get close to him. Get really close to him. Come on, get close to him. Get really close to him. You gotta keep moving. Okay, let's take a look at this now. First, that straight right hand, which I think stunned more than hurt on. There you see it again. Well, he landed it right on the point of the chin. And here's knockdown number two. There and you're going to see on searching out some canvas. And smartly. He bought some time. You know, Chavez is absolutely obsessed with getting a rematch with Meldrick Taylor. And he kidded with us yesterday that he was going to make this a long fight and maybe not look so great to entice Taylor into a rematch quickly. But I don't think that uh, he's looking to make this a long one and the kid is not cooperating with him. And while we were listening to the action in Ahn's corner between rounds, in Chavez's corner, he was being told to move side to side, not stray right in front of Ahn because Ahn could still be dangerous. Now Ahn crouches back toward the floor again and Chavez is momentarily confused been looking for Tony Perez to stop it. In the opening 20 seconds of this round, they traded blows in the center of the ring with on giving just as good as he was getting. Both hooks to the body. Slightly low, but Tony Perez is in a position where he couldn't see exactly where they landed. All three of those punches were a little below the border. But Perez, as you said, was on the opposite side of Chavez and didn't see that. And Ahn isn't complaining anyway. What good would it do him? There's another low left hook to the body. <laughs> More than halfway through round three, and Ahn is beginning to slow down. He's not fighting back now quite as vigorously as was the case in the final minute of round two. And you have to believe that the body punches are taking their toll. Down he goes. And half the crowd has gotten excited over some kind of ruckus that's happening behind us. Jim, that's what you were hearing before that knockdown. Han cannot go on, and he retires. Or as we say in America, he quits. Nobility and courage took Kyung Duk on only so far. Probably a lot of people in the arena expected that to happen somewhere in the middle of round two. It finally takes place at two minutes, 14 seconds of round number three. So Julio Cesar Chavez has the 71st win of his career, his easiest win ever here on HBO in about more typical of the kinds of fights he gets when he goes down to Mexico to entertain his fans there than of those we've seen here in the United States. Let's take a look back now at the action from round three which led to An's retirement prompted by the third knockdown of the bout. The trademark left hook to the body, a combination, and on was down in his own corner. And though we could not hear it from here, since he went down in his own corner, it's entirely possible that his handlers, through the ropes, suggested that this would be enough. He was able to get up well before the count of ten. There it is, digging the hook to the body, and you can see on putting his right arm down to try to protect himself there making it easy for Chavez to land the one-two combination that finished things off. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, two minutes, 14 seconds of the third round. Referee Tony Perez stops this contest. The winner by TKO, still undefeated, still champion, Julio Cesar Chavez.
was the appetizer. A lot of people here were excited about the chance to see Chavez on the same night that they will later get to see Mike Tyson in the ring. The two have been compared so frequently in recent years in terms of their overall proficiency. As many thought before Tyson's loss in Tokyo that he was the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, an honor that most accord to Chavez at this moment. Total punches in the bite, or in the bout, I should say. As computed by HBO Punchstat, Chavez landing half of his blows and many of them punishing blows. And we go now to Larry Merchant in the ring with the winner and interpreter Ruben Castillo. Julio, congratulations. Was he a little tougher than you thought? Si era más peligroso que pensabas. Realmente yo no pensé que fuera tan a resultar la pelea tan tan fácil, la verdad. Lo único que puedo decir es que me sentí muy fuerte. He said he's, it wasn't as tough a fight as he thought. I mean, it, it was an easier fight than he thought it was. And uh, he felt really good. He felt very strong for this fight. Yeah, y lo estaba dejando eh, que me llegara para, para poder pelear unos seis, siete rounds. He was, he was letting him come at him so he could hit him, so he could last six or seven rounds. Well, after you knocked him down twice in the second round, he jumped up and he started to fight with you toe-to-toe -to -toe and landed some decent blows. Did he hurt you at all? Were you surprised that he did that? Después de que lo tumbaste dos veces, empezó a, a ponerse agresivo y nunca te lastimó en cualquier momento. No, la verdad no, lo estaba dejando que, que me llegara porque yo sabía que la pelea iba a terminar muy rápido. He said he was, he was letting him come at him more because he knew that the fight was going to end. Uh, let's talk about the future, Leo. Yesterday when we talked, all you wanted to talk about was a rematch with Meldrick Taylor. What are your thoughts on that? When do you think you'll get to fight him? Hablando de tu futuro, ayer todo lo que hablaste era de Meldrick Taylor. ¿Cuándo la pelea con la revancha y qué son tus pensamientos de eso? Yo quisiera que la pelea se hiciera lo más pronto que, que, se, que se pueda para demostrarle a todo el mundo, a Meldrick Taylor y al que, se, y al que esté, esté enfrente conmigo que yo soy, el, que soy mejor que ellos. He wants the fight to happen as soon as possible. He wants to demonstrate to everybody in the world that he's the best fighter, and he wants to, he wants a rematch. Ya se lo demostré una vez noqueándolo. Ahora quiero pelear de nuevamente con él para para que no haya controversias. He's already demonstrated the first time I knocked him out, but he wants to do it again so he can make sure there's no there's no controversy. Are you disappointed that Taylor is going to try to win the welterweight championship next month? and that you would then have to fight him for a welterweight championship should he win. Si, si, si eres desolucionado porque Melder Taylor quiere pelear por otro, camp otro campeonato, ¿qué es lo que piensa? Yo pienso que Melder Taylor no tiene ningún derecho a pelear por el campeonato welter. He says he doesn't think that Melder Taylor has any reason to fight Primeramente, whatsoever for another title first. Tiene que ganarme a mí primeramente para him. poder esperar un título del mundo. He should beat him first before he can fight another time for the title. But if he does win the welterweight championship, will you fight him as a welterweight? Si ganas el campeonato, el campeonato de peso welter, pelea, pelearás con él no en peso welter? No voy a pelear con él, no. no never. never. All right, congratulations again, but we have the start of a negotiation going on here, how he will eventually fight Meldrick Taylor.